1 from here and what we will say is that when IL-12 is secreted from a macrophage, the T helper 0 will get converted into T helper 1 and here is the fun thing. So, when the T helper 1 comes into existence or when T helper 0 becomes T helper 1, then see this 2 over here in 12, the T helper 1 starts secreting IL-2. So, that is how we will remember it. So, what happened? Macrophage ate up the pathogen, he is showing that pathogen on the surface, he is running towards the lymph node, taking this pathogen over there to go and say, hey look what I got. Meanwhile, he is secreting IL-12, interleukin-12. That interleukin-12 separately via the blood or the tissue humor or, or the fluids reached the lymph node. Over there, we have naive T cells, which are T helper 0 they have no idea what their function is, they receive the IL-12, they immediately got converted into T helper 1. T helper 1 cell in turn starts releasing two things, interleukin 2, very, very important thing and gamma interferon. and gamma interferon. So, no matter what, do not forget this. This axis interleukin 12 gamma interferon axis is really important. I can give you a little hint. If you see, this is acquired arm of immune system and this is innate arm of immune system. If you see, there was a bridge. Remember I said, if you are going to remember one thing, remember this that macrophage is going to activate the acquired system, right. The other thing now keep in mind, acquired system returns the favor and sends the signals back to macrophage saying, yay, I know that you have activated me. I give you the license to start acting on more and more of these pathogens and kill them. So, this gamma interferon is really important to enhance the activity in the innate system. So, that is sort of an amplification which amplification which is happening. Innate arm is activating the acquired arm, acquired arm then in turn is enabling the innate arm. So, they both are amplifying each other, very, very important thing. So, this axis, do not forget this axis. So, this, this axis is called IL-12 gamma interferon axis. IL-12 coming from the macrophage, gamma interferon coming from the T helper 1. Okay. Now, one more thing. So, what does this gamma interferon does to the macrophage? At this time, we would just say it enables it, it enhances the activity of macrophage to capture more and more pathogens and kill them. We will talk more. It has multiple, multiple functions. Now, if we focus here for a second the IL-2 which is released, the IL-2 which is released then acts on another T cell, part of acquired. All T cell and B cell are part of acquired immunity. So, this IL-2 acts on another T cell. I have to say this as well. It acts on the same cell too. So, the cell which secretes the IL-2, that cell itself responds to the IL-2 too. So, in a way this is an autocrine function where the chemical substance is secreted by a cell which is then acted upon by the same chemical substance. So, we will talk more about what does what happens, but IL-2 would do this. Then another T cell sitting here, so I will make it something like this. Let us say So, here is a scary looking T cell, well he, he does not look that scary, but anyways imagine that he is a scary looking T cell, you see he is wearing this helmet as well. So, he is a 
cytotoxic C T cell, cytotoxic T cell. So, he is wearing a T as well, right. So, he is a cytotoxic T cell. What is his function is, he would actually kill the cells which are infected with this pathogen. So, we have to understand the pathogen's behavior too. So, that foreign invader, that foreign thing which entered our body, what he is going to try to do is not to run around in the cities and the streets. He is going to try to jump into a cell and hide in there. So, it is like a foreign substance or a criminal which is out on the road and police is chasing him, what is he going to try to do? He is going to try to hide. So, these guys their first objective in their life is try to go and hide somewhere. So, you would see so creative things if you have done I mean uh, microbiology, some of these guys would hide inside the cells, some of them would cross the bar barriers and move where the immune, immune system cannot act very quickly. Some of them are going to go and sit in the muscle, some would just shape themselves as if they are part of a body and so on. So, they have their ways of trying to camouflage and hide in our body. On the same hand, our body has ways to try to detect these guys and beat them up. So, the cytotoxic T cell has become activated. So, remember this the 2 interleukin 2, the 1 T helper 1. So, IL 12 came T helper 0 became T helper 1 and secreted IL 2 which activated cytotoxic T cell. Now, cytotoxic T cell again we will talk more about it. What he does is he would connect with the cells which have gotten this pathogen hiding in there. So, if I try to make a cell here. So, this is a cell is a really sad cell because this little pathogen is sitting in it and having fun. You say yay I am here. Right? So, that is a real sad cell that cell has gotten the pathogen sitting in it. This T cytotoxic T cell can detect this situation by connecting to something called MHC 1 1. So, please remember we talked about MHC 2 over here correct. Now, we are talking about MHC 1. The difference between them I would just say it briefly here MHC 2 is present on all antigen presenting cells. So, what are antigen presenting cells we will talk more about them, but macrophages B cells and dendritic cells are called antigen presenting cells. The, the basic function is to arrest the antigen, break it apart and take it to the lymph nodes to present it to various cells. On the other hand all nucleated cells, all nucleated cells of our body have MHC 1 on them, major histocompatibility complex 1, they all have it. And when a pathogen appears, when a pathogen goes into them, so when a bacteria or a virus or a fungi or something is hiding inside the cell, what happens? Cells function is disrupted, cell is not able to function correctly, right. So, as a result the MHC protein reduces in the cell. These cytotoxic T cells would connect to the MHC 1, well natural killer cells would detect the, the density of MHC 1 and the cytotoxic T cells would connect with the MHC 1 and then they would kill these cells correct. So, how do they kill them? So, see the soldier. So, he has gotten his own pistol and his own bullets. So, how do they kill them is they send perforins, we will talk more about them and granzymes, we will talk more about these two, but they send perforins and granzymes which then go and break the cell apart and kill it. So, it is like a criminal is hiding somewhere and we just whack that place. Now, I am going to make one more thing. So, let us say here, here is another cell, we do not know who he is, his identity is gone, 
is hiding. So there is another cell with the, with the mask on his head, maybe a ski mask, and he is hiding. That cell produces IL-4. So in immunology you would study that just like macrophages produce IL-12 to convert the helper T cell to helper 1. Similarly, there is an unknown cell which produces IL-4 which converts the helper T cell 0 naive into again a little bit better aware and happy cell uh, called helper T cell 2. Correct? And just like here T helper cell secretes IL-2, this guy remember the 4 here, this guy T helper 1, so T helper 1 0 is converted to T helper 2, T helper 2 secretes IL-4 and IL-5 which we would see the, that this acts on the B cells to cause effect through them. So we will we'll talk about that in another uh, few minutes. Thank you.